Okay, so for this next video lecture, so we will be discussing the next cycle, which is the expenditure or disbursement cycle. Okay, so the expenditure or disbursement cycle, so this includes the acquisition of goods or inventory and services okay, in the form of the expenses that are uh, being incurred the receipt of the goods that was ordered, recording of the liability for the payments for such acquisitions, and the expenditure of cash during the payment of those uh, purchases. This is in connection with paying for the purchases and the acquisitions okay, for the inventory or the expenses incurred by the entity. Okay, so basically under this cycle, this is more of the payments, okay, for the expenses. So, the activities under this cycle, this usually includes or involves the inventory control department, or this is the requisition, or the, the department which uh, purchases the needed inventory. Another is the purchasing department who are responsible for the purchases of the required uh, items by the requisition department. Okay, the receiving department. So once the inventory that was ordered from the suppliers arrived, so this department normally receives the delivery. Next is the accounts payable. So, they are responsible for recording the liability okay, for those acquisitions. The treasurer's department. So, basically, they are the ones who are responsible for the disbursement of cash for the payments of the liabilities for those expenses. And lastly is the general accounting department. So, they are the ones who are re recording these transactions. Okay, so, just like... Uh, under the re revenue or receipt cycle, so we will also discuss the different control procedures for each of these departments. Okay, so to start, let us discuss uh, the control procedures for the inventory control or the requisitioning department. So we have here the following policies and procedures that should be applied in this department. Okay, first, when inventories fall below the determined reorder point, so if you could still remember in your cost accounting or in strategic cost, uh, we uh, determined or compute the reorder point in which this at this point or at this level of inventory in the warehouse, so it the, the entity needs to purchase or place the order okay, for those items so that stock out will be avoided. Okay, so an inventory control clerk in this department will prepare the purchase requisition or request when inventories fall below a predetermined reorder point or even when they reach the reorder point. So that is the time that they should place already the order or the requisition <clears throat> okay next one copy of the purchase requisition would be sent to the purchasing department okay so this is of course uh, for the reason that this department is responsible for purchasing the ordered items okay to initiate the process for the purchase Okay, next, another copy of the purchase requisition will be placed in the open purchase requisition file. So this is just to make sure that <clears throat> this uh, transaction will be accounted for. <clears throat> or uh, there should be another document later on to be to match. Okay, when uh, payment okay, will be made by the treasurer. Okay, and lastly, in order to provide proper authorization uh, control, the inventory control department is segregated from, again, this is the segregation of duties, 
from the purchasing department so because in this case they execute the purchase transaction so this is to make sure that the entity will avoid any manipulation for the purchases okay of the items needed okay so this is very important so that uh, there is control between uh, the purchases okay and those which handles the item or the inventory okay so those are the different uh, procedures for uh the inventory control or requisitioning department okay so the next department is the purchasing department okay so here are the following procedures and policies which they can apply okay for control purposes the first one is uh, the purchasing department should be independent of the receiving and accounting department so again we emphasize here the segregation of duties okay <clears throat> between those who places the order or basically um there are also part of their function where they authorize the purchase okay so this should be segregated from those who will receive the order okay to counter check whether the items that was ordered was actually received in good condition and in a uh, proper and complete quantity okay and of course for those who are recording these transactions so it should be independent as well okay <clears throat> another is competitive bids or price quotations from the suppliers or vendors should also be obtained okay for goods and services to be purchased if possible so this is to avoid uh, any internal arrangement between the supplier and the uh, purchasing department because normally if there are no bids and the purchasing department will just identify the supplier then probably there might exist uh, some sort of uh, payment of commission by the supplier to the purchasing officer okay, because in this case um, there was a sale transaction okay, between the entity and the supplier without uh, having to go through bidding or price quotations so this is to avoid such uh, instances as well okay and aside from that uh, this will also help the entity in selecting the seller which can provide them with the necessary uh, item with a lower price compared to other suppliers okay so the next uh, procedure will be the purchasing department should also have the responsibility to prepare the purchase order and uh, they will be the ones to communicate with the vendors to secure the ordered item so this is part of the scope of their responsibility but then again in in uh in the case of the receipt of the delivery there should be another department who is responsible for such as well as the payment of the purchases okay so next is the purchasing department should not prepare a purchase order in the absence of an approved purchase requisition so this is very important okay aside from the purchasing department okay approving and processing for the purchase um there should also be another officer or employee in charge who will uh, authorize or approve the purchase okay before it can be processed okay so this is very important to avoid any purchases of unnecessary and personal purchases by the purchasing officer okay so the next policy is purchase order should be consecutively numbered so the purpose of this is to control the number of uh, purchases and the transactions that go through this department okay so it should be pre-numbered to make sure that um, there are controlled and approved purchases only okay, should be processed okay so the copy of 
the purchase order will be sent to the vendor. So, of course, this is to initiate the order and to inform them of the items that uh, are needed and are to be purchased by the entity. Another copy will go to the requisitioning party. Okay, so this is uh, to uh, inform them that the purchase was, was, was uh, processed and these are the items which were ordered. Okay, this is also to confirm that the order was placed. Okay, another copy will go to the accounts payable department to record the transaction okay, of placing the order and to uh, uh, record the accounts payable okay, or the amount of the purchase that was placed okay, to the vendor. And a blind copy will be sent to the receiving department. What is a blind copy? Blind copy is a requisition or purchase order form without detailing the item which was ordered as well as the amount. Because in this case, the receiving department will be responsible for recording of whatever uh, the deliveries received are. Okay, so this is to make sure that uh, what is received by the receiving department will be recorded by them. So after that, it will be matched with the purchase order if indeed what was received was actually the items ordered as well as the amount. Okay, so that is the purpose of having a blind copy for the receiving department. Another is uh, one copy should be kept in the purchasing department file which shows the names of the usual vendors and a price list of the goods often purchased. So this should be both maintained. Okay, so here, um, this is for the reference purposes. Okay, and as well as uh, retaining the vendors which normally provides the items which are needed and the cost as well that can be afforded, uh, af uh, that uh, the entity can afford to pay for such orders. Okay, so next is all purchase transactions should be reviewed periodically by the company personnel who is independent and not related with the purchasing department. So again, this uh, responsibility can be given to the internal auditors if the entity has their own internal audit department. Okay, so those are the different control procedures for purchasing department. Okay, so we will proceed with the next uh, department, which is the receiving department. Okay, so after the items was placed, uh, the order to the vendor, so this is the time where the delivery of the order will be received. So again, this is... Uh, the responsibility of the receiving department. So here are the following policies and procedures that they should uh, apply. First, a uh, receiving department should be independent. Okay, so again, emphasizing the uh, segregation of duty. Okay, so in the, they should be independent of the purchasing, accounts payable, and treasurer's department. So meaning the receiving department's uh, function is only to receive the deliveries from the vendors and to check and to record whatever uh, items was received okay so they should not be uh, responsible for the for placing the order for recording as well as the payment okay another is a blind copy okay so this is what we've mentioned uh, earlier a blind copy will be uh, provided to the receiving department okay so which only shows the items ordered but not the quantities so if uh, the delivery will arrive so they will receive such and uh, they will be forced to count the goods when they are received okay to make sure also that what is ordered later on uh, is matched with the purchase order
Okay, so what was received matched with the purchase order. Okay, so here the receiving department should count. They should also inspect and reconcile the items that they received okay, with the blind copy of the purchase order. So the purpose of this is to make sure that the goods should be accepted only when ordered. Okay, so that is the reason. So another is a receiving report will also be prepared. So this will uh, show the quantity and conditions of the goods received together with the blind uh, copy of the uh, purchase order. Okay, and copies of the receiving report should be forwarded to the purchasing accounts payable and the inventory control department. So this will show what the actual items was received okay, from the delivery by the vendors. Okay, another is a receiving log should also be maintained for all the receiving reports. Okay, so this is to make sure that indeed the receiving department prepared and forwarded such documents. And lastly, goods received should be forwarded now to the warehouse once um, the, the purchase order matched with the receiving report. Meaning, the items received was actually the items that was ordered by the entity. Okay, once there are discrepancies, so there might be some returns, okay, or uh, this will be hold, or this will, uh, or the items will still be in the receiving department until, or be forwarded in the shipping department to return it to the vendors for correction. Okay, so those are the different policies and procedures for the receiving department. Okay, so the next uh, department is the accounts payable department. So normally they are the ones who are recording uh, the transactions okay, for purchases and the related liability or payable to the vendors. Okay, so these are the following control procedures for the accounts payable department. So the accounts payable department should be independent okay, from purchasing, receiving, and treasures department. So since they are the ones who are recording, so there should be separation or segregation of duties to make sure that uh, the functions will not overlap and manipulations of the record will be avoided. Okay, another is copies of the purchase requisition, the goods which were needed, uh, purchase order, those goods which were ordered, as well as the receiving report, the goods which were received, should be kept on file until a vendor's invoice is received. Okay, so all of these items will be matched okay, together with the vendor's invoice before um, the disbursement later on will be paid by the treasurer's department. Okay, so these are the source documents okay, for the recording of the purchase transaction. Okay, another is a vendor's invoice should be verified for accuracy. Meaning, uh, this should be matched from the other documents uh, processed during the uh, requisition in placing the order as well as the receipt, the receipt of the items okay, before they will uh, be recorded or even if they are recorded to determine if there are any discrepancies. Okay. So, the accounts payable department should reconcile okay, as mentioned. The purchase requisition, purchase order, receiving report, and the vendor's invoice. And once these four documents are matched, meaning there is no deviation, a disbursement voucher will be prepared and the voucher package is assembled. So but disbursement voucher is needed before the payment will be made because this will serve as a uh, document or proof that indeed 
uh, there is a complete uh, purchase transaction and therefore the vendors are now uh, needed to be paid for such orders. Okay. So the voucher package should be filed by due date and forwarded to the treasurer's department. Okay, so because in this case, the treasurer's department will be the one who will pay for such uh, purchases. So the accounts payable department should also record the purchase in the purchases journal. So again, this is a form of a special journal where uh, all the credit purchases is recorded. While cash purchases will be recorded under the cash disbursements journal. Okay, so please uh, try to recall your special journals. Okay. So aside from that, um, the accounting department should also record the liability in the accounts payable subsidiary ledger for the specific uh, vendor where such items was purchased. Okay, so another is there should also be daily summaries okay, that must be prepared okay, for the items or payables that were rec recorded for the day. And lastly, suppliers' monthly statement should be matched with the recorded accounts payable. This is to make sure that uh, recorded uh, accounts payable balance is correct. So those are the different procedures for the accounts payable department. Okay, so we will go to the last department for the disbursement or um, expense cycle. Okay, so this is for the treasurer's department. So this is uh, this cycle ends or is completed because at this department, uh, this is uh, the ones who are responsible for paying the liability. So the treasurer should be independent. Okay, so again, segregation of uh, duties okay, from the purchasing, receiving, and accounts payable departments because in this case, uh, they are the ones, as mentioned, will be pay, paying the expenses or disbursing the cash to the vendors. Next, all checks should be pre-numbered and properly accounted for. Okay, normally to control... Uh, and to prevent or to avoid cash theft, so the entity will uh, use checks as payment because in this case, checks will not be issued until it was signed or authorized for disbursement. And there should be a payee that must be uh, written in the face of the checks to make sure that payment was actually made for those party which the entity owes okay, or has li a liability with. Okay, it should also be pre-numbered to control the issuance of the checks. Next, unused checks should be physically controlled. Okay, So there should be someone, again, who are responsible for authorizing the issuance of checks before it can be uh, paid to other parties. Next, voided checks. So, so uh, this should be mutilated to avoid reuse, meaning uh, the, the, the check will be uh, crumpled or it will be uh, cut into two so that it uh, will not be reused or accepted for encashment because these are voided checks. Okay, all checks. Or this can be shredded, okay, to avoid reuse. Next, all checks should be made payable to a person or a company, as mentioned. So this should be clearly written in the face of that check to, to determine also and to make sure that uh, the persons who receives the payment are actually uh, the party where the entity owes or has a liability with. Another is the treasurer should also have no access to the petty cash fund. There should be a petty cash fund manager who, man, uh, who takes care of the disbursements for small amounts of disbursements. Okay, so the treasurer will only take care of those items which are 
uh, require or which require a higher amount of cash okay to segregate and to also to segregate the duty and to also avoid theft of cash and to make sure that there should be a person who are responsible once um, cash was um, stolen or taken next uh, treasurer should not approve the cash disbursement so again because they are the ones who are who has the custody of the payment of cash so therefore they should be segregated from those who approve the disbursement and the recording also of these transactions so this was actually mentioned in the first slide okay for this department another is voucher package uh, received from the accounts payable department this would be or this should be reviewed in due date before the treasurer signs the checks for disbursement so this is to make sure that this uh payment are due already and payable to the vendor okay next a voucher package should be stamped paid immediately after signing of the check to avoid double payment for the same expenditure okay next a treasurer or the treasurer should uh forward the checks to the vendor okay for payment and all disbursement should be made through checks okay to impose control of the disbursement because there is someone who will approve before the payment or issuance of check is made okay except for small amount of payment so this will be under the petty cash fund so the checks sequential numbering will also aid in the control of cash disbursement so two signatures normally are required for large amount of disbursement so this is to make sure that this is authorized and correct correctly paid bank statement and paid checks should be delivered directly to the person who prepares the bank record okay so this is to make sure that uh the disbursement made was uh, matched also okay with the balances of the cash in the bank and lastly the bank reconciliation should be prepared by the person so we mentioned also this before uh, segregation of duty this should be independent from the treasurer and the record keeping okay so those are the different uh, control procedures for the treasurer's department